Hello, friends, and welcome to episode two of the Qualiverse. I'm Jim Maltese, and I've got a secret. I love checklists. They are some of my favorite things in the entire world. In fact, I start each day with a prioritized daily task list, which is basically a checklist of things I need to get done before the end of the day. When I take scouts camping, I use a checklist to make sure I have everything I need. When I go to Costco, you guessed it, that's another checklist. When I get up to leave a restaurant even, I use a mental checklist. I got my wallet, my 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 phone, my keys, I'm, I'm good to go. When I want to make sure I delivered a quality AV system, I use checklists out the wazoo. They make life so easy. And not only that, they make it possible to consistently deliver on experiences. Many people don't understand the power of checklists. They think using checklists are boring or they might slow them down or, or maybe they might even be beneath them and, and, and their experience. But, you know, what I found is sometimes you need to slow down to speed up. Right. And, and, and sometimes you, you also need to slow down to, to do your job well and to make sure that you've done your job well. So Atul Gawande wrote a book called The Checklist Manifesto, and it's about what checklists can do for everyone in all walks of life. One of his examples of the power of checklists is what they did for surgeons in eight hospitals around the world. Surgical teams began using a very simple two minute checklist and saw a 36% drop in major surgical complications and a 47% decline in deaths. And these are super specialized doctors that go to school for eight plus years and participate in thousands of hours of procedures. Their performance and the lives of their patients were dramatically improved by introducing just a simple two-minute checklist. And keep in mind, this checklist didn't have instructions for the surgery that they were about to perform. It simply paused the entire team to have a pre-operative discussion to bring everyone on the same page. It didn't teach them how to do the surgery or, or replace their several years of training. It simply focused their attention to the task at hand and aided in providing protection against lapses of memory due to distractions or fatigue. And, you know, there might be one or two of those in, in an operating room. And it's the same thing with pilots, right? Pilots fly the same routes on the same planes every day. They do thousands of, of, of trips. They might even do uh, the same trip in the same plane a, a couple of times a day. And Every time they get that plane to move, they fill out a pre-flight checklist. Why? Because they're not going to leave something as dangerous as, as, as flying a plane to memory. They have their pre-flight checklist. They're going to go through, make sure they have enough fuel for the trip, that their flaps work, that the engines are online, that their gauges are there. They have to use a checklist. It, it's what every pilot in the world does. They go through their pre-flight checklist. Um, and that's just to get the plane off the ground. Now, imagine something as crazy and as um, surprising, and not, not common, if your engines go out. And then I always think about the hero on the Hudson when I think about checklists and Sully, right? Everyone knows him as Sully. He went through his pre-flight checklist, got off the ground, everything was fine, and then a flock of geese flew into both his engines and he lost all the engines on his plane. So you just took off and you have no thrust. You, you have no engines. What do you do? I mean, think about the pressure, think about the stress, think about just like the tunnel vision. Like, would, would you just start trying things? Would, would you do it haphazardly? Not at all. Not at all. What they do is um, they have the discipline, they have the expertise to calm themselves down and then trust in the procedures and checklists that thousands of pilots and engineers and flight crews before them have put together for these situations. And that's what they had to do. Um, they, they, they went through. Uh, Sykes, the co-pilot, went through the checklist to try and bring both engines back up. Sully went through the checklist to, to look for a, a, a safe landing zone. And, and the flight crew went through their checklists and procedures to make sure that the um, passengers stay as calm and as safe as possible. Everyone had their role. Everyone had their procedure down. Everyone had their checklist down. And that's how they became heroes on the Hudson. Right, Sully, along with his co-pilot Skiles, along with their flight crew, they saved all 155 of their passengers when they made that miraculous landing on the Hudson River. It was because they trusted in the process, they trusted in the checklists. They survived because of checklists. The crew 
kept their calm because of checklists. They were able to evacuate all 155 passengers within three minutes because of, say it with me, checklists. They put their trust in the procedures and followed them because they understood it was their best chance of survival. That's incredible. And, and you know, I do the same thing when I take my kids camping. And, you know, listen, it's not life or death. I, I, I know and appreciate that. It, it's nowhere near life or death, like in an operating room or, or trying to land a plane on the Hudson River. But, you know, anyone who has taken kids camping before knows the stakes are kind of still pretty high. And, and listen, I've been camping since I was six. Um, I'm by no means an expert, but I, I do have plenty of experience. And I would never dream of preparing for a trip the night before without my checklist, without my camping checklist. There's there's work that's going to distract me. Phone calls are happening. Kids are asking for extra dessert. Bedtime's coming up. I've, I've got a lot going on in my head. Because of all those distractions, because of those momentary memory lapses, I might forget the extra batteries for my flashlight, or I, I, I might forget the cooking utensils. And these aren't big deals, right? I can always hop in the car and find a Walmart or something like that. But it would still affect my experience in the wilderness. And I don't want that to happen. By using the checklists, I'm better prepared. I feel confident. I trust in them because I've used them so often. They are going to be my core essentials that I need to have a good time in the woods. And now I don't always strictly keep to the checklist. They are my core. I make sure I have everything on the checklist, but sometimes, you know, I'm, I might add some stuff just to, to be a goose, to have some fun. Sometimes um, I'll add something novel or, or interesting that I wanted to try. Maybe the, um, the, the campsite is having like a, a campsite decorating contest or a chili cook-off or something like that. So for that trip, I'll add some Christmas lights or, or I'll add a Dutch oven and a, and a recipe for chili or something. And I'll try it out. It's added on top of my essential checklist. But this is the cool thing. If it works out great, like if it makes the experience that much better, I just add it to my core checklist. And now I'm prepared to do that every single time. It's, it's essentially continual improvement, right? And, and once you have a checklist written down, once you have it there, it's so easy to improve. Because if you make a tweak, you just need to add a thing. And then you can bring that item on every single camp out. It, it, it brings that consistency. It makes you feel prepared that you're not going to forget those essentials every time you go out. Checklists are, are just awesome. Plus, not only that, you can share it with your friends. I can share it with my family, with my scouts, with everything. And this is Jim's recipe for a great camping trip. Their checklists are just, they're just awesome. Uh, and now, so the, the same thing is true for delivering AV systems. I have to use the AV9000 checklist if the systems are large and custom or if they're small and standardized. It doesn't matter, I need to use the checklists. Why? Because at stake are the experiences of the users and these systems just have to work. Um, the only way to assure that this is the case is with a checklist. And I am not going to leave turning systems over um, to my client to chance. Right. There's too much that can go on. There's just too much at stake. Um, I've got a lot going on in my life. Right. I'm not not crashing into the Hudson River, a lot going on in my life, but I've got a lot going on in my life. Uh, and if I just tried to make sure that everything was ready to go from memory, I would definitely miss something. Right. I mean, what about checking all the, the wall plates in the system? What about the, um, the the functionality that isn't necessarily on the user interface, but we still promise the client? Uh, what about just Maybe they have a, a, a certain set of performance specifications that need to be met that I forgot to check. By using a checklist, I can provide evidence of everything that was reviewed for that system, both the unsuccessfully and successfully completed tests. And why is this important? Checklists aren't just there to create a punch list. They're there to provide evidence of what was done to confirm the system is ready for you. So both the successfully completed checklist as well as the unsuccessfully completed checklist. That trail is critical to the success of, of the AV system. And with using checklists, I can skip right over the whole system is done thing and go straight to the system being done done. So what do, and, and this is all great for me, you know, as an AV service provider, um, but what, what do the checklists mean for buyers and users of AV systems? It means that they're going to receive a complete system, 
It means that the system they receive will behave the same way as the other systems currently deployed in their building. And it also means that any team member following these checklists will deliver a consistent experience and there is no need to request the A team. And, you know, a lot of people think that finding that A team is the way to go, right? If you get Jim for your project manager, it's going to go great. It's going to be fantastic. Just make sure you ask for Jim. The problem with that is it will put constraints on the resources, right? What happens if that A team is busy? What happens if the A team doesn't have enough people on it to, to complete that entire project? Then you're out of luck. It's not the right way to do AV. It's much better to have the process in place so that the entire team is capable of delivering systems at that same level, at that, that consistent experience level with checklists. With checklists, there's no A team, it's just the team. We're all following the same thing, and that's a powerful thing. And the crazy thing is the checklists themselves, they're most likely generic and, and not even specifically generated for the exact systems being tested, but they do include tests that touch on every aspect of the system. So that means that you, you take a pause and make sure the audio is working exactly as you expect, the video is working exactly as you expect, the control system, the network, um, everything is ready for use. And you, you've taken that time to verify that. And not only that, the reason we can trust that is because these checklists have been honed for over a decade at this point by an international community of quality-minded AV professionals. They've been used on tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of systems at this point. They can be trusted and they make your life so much less stressful, right? They, they, they make the stress just melt away. And I think Jocko Willink said it best. He said, discipline equals freedom. And it took me a little while to, to really understand what that meant, because when I think of discipline, I think it, it you know, it kind of doesn't sound freeing at all. It, it, it sounds constraining. It, it sounds like it's going to kind of kind of shoehorn me in, into this hole. But think about what what life is like with discipline. Right. I mean, um, if we exercise with discipline. Yeah. You know that when the alarm clock goes off, it might might be a, a, a rough go at it. But once you start exercising, you feel great for the rest of the day. You feel energized and powerful, like your body feels the way it should. That that's pretty cool, you know, and then eating with discipline. Right. I mean, that 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 second bowl of ice cream at night might taste good. It tastes so good for that five minutes. But then the entire night, that entire next day, you're thinking, what have I done? This is miserable. I feel, I feel bloated. I feel sick. There, there's stress on the body. And so if we start living with discipline, all of a sudden that stress, that pressure, that all of that melts away and we feel lighter, we feel better and, and, and we, we feel free, right? So discipline equals freedom. And, and it can be stressful turning a complicated AV system over to the users without a quality management system, right? We, we said it before, you have to remember everything, you, you, you have to check everything. And, and if you leave that to memory, that's, that's kind of dangerous. It's certainly very stressful for me. But putting your trust in a well-developed quality process and applying it with discipline takes all that stress away. It's just like the surgical two-minute checklist or, or the pre-flight checklist or the, the crazy both my engines have failed checklist. They pause the team to focus on the task at hand and make sure everything is fit for use. Quality fit for use. So when paired with the knowledge and experience of the AV design and installation team, the AV9000 checklist provide the highest likelihood of receiving your systems complete as expected, on time, and within budget. It is exactly how AV is done done. So that concludes episode two. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below. We really appreciate the support and, um, and have an AV day.